It's time for another episode of The Sean Tabbitt Show, a podcast where I connect you with thought leaders from across the globe, digging into some of my favorite topics like personal development, marketing, spirituality, and pretty much any other shiny object that happens to catch my attention. Today, my special guest is my good friend, Charles Fox, and we are going to be talking about his brand new book, Night Vision, Making Sense of Supernatural Dream Encounters. Charles, it is always a joy to see you, my friend. Welcome back to the show. Great to see you, my brother. Well, uh, Charles, you've been on the show a number of times, so we're going to do the elevator pitch version of the Charles Fox origin story. So uh, for people who are just meeting you for the first time on our talk today, give them a little bit of context. What are a few things they should know about you? Well, I dream just about every night. (laughs) And so, you know, I started dreaming when I was just a kid, you know, uh, from New York City. And I started seeing these weird looking, uh, I call them these kangaroo like looking creatures. Uh, they would scare me when I was about five years old. And um, and so I didn't know anything about this whole seer stuff uh, then. And uh, so that began me on a journey, you know, even from that age. And as I got older, I began to see when I got filled with the Holy Spirit, I was seeing demons and I began to start seeing angels. And um, as the a lot of things happened between then, you know, uh, time uh, where I went in the military and the Lord called me into ministry while I was in the military. A lot of times people get called into ministry in the military. I don't know what, what, that's, what that's all about. But God called me in, into the ministry then, and I knew he was calling me. And I had this enormous desire to preach the word, his, the word all over the world. And so, um, you know, went, got prepared, went to Bible college, uh, went for four years and wasn't enough. Then I decided to go to do my master's degree. I met my wife <laughs> at Regent University. You know, I had just broken up with my girlfriend. I thought I was going to get married to the one in college, you know, but God had a plan. And when I, uh, when I went to uh, Regent University, about to graduate, I met April. We've been married 23 years. We have two wonderful children who are now in college. And so we're still making history. <laughs> well, Charles, thank you for that elevator pitch introduction. Um, I, I know you and I have talked a bit about your history with dreams in the past, and it, it reminds me a little bit of Blake Healy and some of what he's, he has shared in a number of his books. Um, for you, when, when, when was the point you realized that this was God speaking to you and that it was under something? Because I, I feel like, especially when kids really lean into a seer and prophetic gift at a young age. It's scary. It's weird. They don't know what to do with it. Uh, But there's a point, you know, that sometimes happens when people get filled with the spirit or they get in a church context where there's somebody around that can mentor them to know how to deal with what they're experiencing. I'm, I'm just curious, when was that shift for you? I think the thing shifted when I had a dream about Richard Pryor, the comedian Richard Pryor, you know, growing up in New York, that name for our family meant a lot. OK, um, he was a funny guy um, uh, of a lot of a lot of vulgarity with him. You know, uh, he wasn't like that when he first started out. Uh, but then he, he got to be more crass as he went along. But I think it was around nine, probably 2008. Maybe um, I had a dream about about Richard Pryor in the dream. Um, I saw that Richard Pryor was I was with Richard Pryor in his dream. And it was like I was the ghost of Christmas present, past and future. And I went with him everywhere. And we were going over different parts of his life. So we got to the end part of the dream and looked like we were in heaven. And we saw this, I saw this huge banquet table and I saw all this beautiful food. And then I said to Richard, okay, Richard, how about it? He said, I don't know, man. And the dream ended right there. A couple of days later, he died. And then that began to say, okay, what happened? It felt like I was not in my room that night. It felt like I was with him all night. I was tired. It felt like I was up all night. And then that began. I had dreams before that, of course. But that began to cause a shift in me to say, there's something else going on here. And I began to really pay attention to what God was doing after that, because I said, well, maybe I could have focused on Richard Pryor more instead of just having the dream and just letting that go. And now he's dead, maybe like a week later or something like that. So it began, I really began to take notice of those things after that dream. I think sometimes, you know, in terms of dreams, God can be communicating with us. 
other times I, I'm willing to lean into that we could be experiencing uh, a kind of almost spiritual travel, if you will. Would you say that's fair? I think that's fair. Totally fair. Because some it's kind of like this thing where you're having these things. You're going, wait, was I was I with Richard? Because I don't feel like I was here that night. And sometimes you are traveling. God could put you somewhere preaching the gospel to somebody um, in Africa. And you think, was I in Africa last night? I was talking to this guy all night. And then later on, people have had those encounters where the, you meet someone. I know you. I spend time with you, you know. And sometimes we call it deja vu. You go, on, well, you know, I feel like I've been here before. You probably have in the spirit. You probably traveled there and, and uh, you saw it. Uh, I think we were talking before we we came on back in 19, I think it was 1994, 19, I think 1993 or 94. Um, I had dreamed that I had flew over to New York City. Now, I'm from New York originally. And I saw this all this destruction. I saw all this buildings and shambles. And I'm like, it looks terrible. What happened here? That was in 1994. Okay. I was in the hospital. I was dealing with something at that time. And um, I came, <laughs> flew back and through, I think on the other side, there was an older gentleman who was in the next room. Or, like it was, We were separated by one of those hospital, like what do you call those sheets, whatever those things are. I went through that and then went back in my body. And 2001, 911 happens. What I was seeing was 911. And so it looked like a dream, but I'm like, I actually went to New York and then I came back, and, you know, and I was in my back in my body. So the, a lot of dreams that we have, they're like these visions, they're visions because dreams are just night visions. They're visions, they're visions while you're sleeping. And so sometimes it is traveling, sometimes it's a dream, but I think that Maybe we shouldn't get so caught up in what it was and all that. We, we inquiring minds want to know. The key thing is, what is God revealing to you? And what are we going to do about it? Because many times, not, not say many times, all the time, it should precipitate a prayer on our behalf. We should begin to pray regarding the dream. And that's one thing that really shifted to me about the Richard Pryor thing, where I always pray, no matter what I see, how weird it is whether I think it's a pizza dream or not, pray about it first, submit it to the Lord. <laughs> yeah, I, I still want to know where that pizza dream phrase comes from. We use, we all overuse that all, all the time. <laughs> I, I want to get to how to deal with dreams in, in a couple minutes here, but um, for you as a, a seer prophetic guy, you've been dreaming as long as you can remember, uh, in terms of when you look to scripture and you see dreamers in scripture and God speaking to dreamers in scripture, like, are there are there any any accounts or stories that have been a, an encouragement to you through the years as you've had to deal with being just a a, a big time dreamer, so to speak? Yeah, I would say the person that I look at in scripture so many times was Joseph in the Old Testament because I felt like my life resembled Joseph. You know, where now I've never been in literal prison, but sometimes you feel like in your life, okay, am I now? And I feel like I'm in prison right now. Am I about to be promoted? And so many times when I see Joseph where he had to grow in his character, okay? Um, I call it the, the crucible. He had to go through the crucible of character, okay? Uh, where you see him telling, sharing his dreams with his brothers, with his father, okay? And saying that, I saw all your wheat bowing to mine and, you know, you feel special. You're given a coat of many colors and you have this favoritism and you have this gift, but you need to grow in that gift. And that's been like, that's been my thing, you know, to where, you know, you have this gift, you know, you can see, you start seeing the future, but you have to grow in it. You have to work on that character. So Joseph is someone that I've drawn a lot of encouragement from and seeing where God promoted him and made him the second in command in Egypt. But he had to go through the crucible of character. That character had to match the gifting. And that's something the Lord has really taken me through. Well, and I think one of the lessons that we can take from Joseph's story is some things are meant for us and some things are meant to share. Talk to us a little bit about, um, you know, whether it's a dreams or things that we're seeing prophetically. Uh, we don't have to just automatically put everything up on Facebook the next day. 
Uh, I think some of our prophetic friends overshare. How do we have discernment in that area? Yeah, I just think right here that some need to have this thing of growing to maturity because so many times, as you mentioned, we're getting something. It's not the fact that we're not getting something. You know, we're we're spiritual beings. You're going to be getting stuff when you sleep. You're a spirit, okay? And you have a soul, you live in a body. So you're going to be getting stuff all the time, especially if you're in tune to the Holy Spirit. The issue is that God, is God telling you to share that right now? Is God telling you to pray about that and to release it at the right time? So I think for some, it depends on what's going on in this heart of ours. What was our intention for sharing it? Did we want attention? Are we trying to get our name out there? Are we trying to let people know that we can be trusted and that we're accurate? Are we trying to get more invites? See, it's got to be this thing where we have to, what we do is for the Lord, okay? I think Paul said, when we live or die is for the Lord. It's got to be for him. Um, it's got to be, is he going to get the glory? So, so it needs to be prayer. Prayer needs to be the focal point of every dream. We have a dream. We need to ask the Lord, Lord, maybe it was a very impactful dream. Maybe you saw something related to the nation. Maybe you saw something related to, to the leadership of our country. Do you, you need to pray about that. When does, does God want you to release that? Or does God just want you to pray? Because that praying is a flesh burner. As you are praying, God will just say, I just want you to intercede for him. I've seen things that that happen. I've seen at times where I saw a possible assassination on a particular president. I said nothing. The Lord said, you just pray and you just continue to stay stay in prayer until I release you from it. And I just prayed. Didn't tell anybody. I'm not going to do that. The Lord did not tell me to do that. And so, so many, it depends on the person's heart. It depends on what their intent is. Uh, If your intention if your intent is because you got a word from the Lord and God has told you, all right, share that in like 30 days. Let me give you an example. The Lord gave me a dream. This is when I was pastoring the church that we had just uh, left about a year ago. We pastored for there for 12 years. I had a person on staff, right? He was a spiritual son of mine. He was dating this, uh, he was dating this girl and they were getting serious. He was considering marriage. I had a dream one night that they were in a bedroom and they were sitting on a bed together. And he was very emotional in his dream, my spiritual son. And she said to him, the girl he was dating at the time, she said these words, if you want it, you're gonna, it's gonna cost you. That's what she, that's what she said in the dream. And then I heard a voice that came right here in the dream. And it said it three times. She is not a servant. She is not a servant. She is not a servant three times. Now, three, that number is very important right here for emphasis in dreams. Now, I woke up. I said, Lord, what do I do with this? This guy, he loves he loves this girl. And right now, they're going well. I, the Lord said, I want you to fast and pray for X amount of weeks. I heard it very clearly. Fast and pray. If you share that right away with him, it's going to cause a problem between you and him, okay? And I'm going to be seen like the bad guy, and then he's going to split and think he won't be able to trust you, okay? I prayed and I fasted right here for him, and the Lord began to deal with his heart about the situation. When it came time for me to share it, when we had dinner together, the Lord had already worked in his heart, and he didn't feel right about it. And then my dream became confirmation to him about breaking off the relationship. He is now married to the right woman, okay, after he broke that off, and he has three children, and they're very happy. You see, that's that's a classic point right here, a classic case of praying through and seeking the Lord and letting him you share that at the right time. Is it okay for us to ask God for dreams? I think for I, I, so many people, we rarely dream, we rarely remember our dreams. Uh, my, my favorite story is from uh, my pastor here in South Carolina and one of my best friends. Um he was mad because his wife dreamed all the time. And he said, God, why is it? It's unfair that Wendy gets to dream all the time. Uh, why don't I get to dream? And then God opened up his dream life like never before. So uh, should should we be willing to take that step of asking God to give us dreams if we're not dreaming regularly already? Yes. Even though I dream most nights, I still ask God for more revelation. 
You ask. I still ask for more. It's like, I'm not asking for dreams just for the sake of having dreams. Dreams and signs and wonders. What's a sign for? A sign points us to our destination, right? So, but we don't want to camp out under a sign. If I camp out and I just say, I just want to have a dream for the sake of having a dream. Dreams point us, a, a dream encounter from the Lord points us closer to God. It draws us closer to Jesus. So it is okay to ask for dreams. It's okay to ask for God to visit you in dreams. You know, I do it every night. You know, we should, he said, uh, we should earnestly contend for the best gifts, especially that we prophesy. However, there are dreams that are prophetic and God could be prophesying to you through dreams. So yeah, we need to ask for it. We need to ask for everything that God gives. Anything that God has, I want it. If if if, if it, God gave it to you, I want it. So, so it's okay to ask for dreams. And what about capturing dreams? I mean, th- this is a real practical thing. And I, I've even heard uh, like Bill Johnson talk about how he's sad because he's not been diligent in capturing words and dreams that he's had through the years. And some of those things get lost because we forget or I feel like we can get into a place where we embellish or we start working it out differently in our mind if we don't capture it uh, just in, in that moment. So at a, at a real practical level, what are some ways people can be diligent to capture those dreams? Because I find whether we're talking dreams or prophetic words I've gotten from people, often those things don't make sense. Sometimes three, five, eight, nine years down the road, you'll look back through your old journals, you know, you're like, oh my gosh, God was talking to me about this stuff you know, whatever, all these years ago. And I didn't see it back then, but he certainly did. So uh, just in in your journey, what has been some uh, practical ways you've been able to keep track of dreams? Oh, yeah. What I do is I have my iPhone, my iPad right by my bedside. So no matter if the Lord wakes me up at three in the morning with a dream, you write, write it down. Even though you're tired, you're groggy. If you go back to sleep, you will miss some things. You, you may, you might, you might miss a lot. So what I do, I try to capture it right away when it's still fresh in my mind. I start writing some notes. You don't have to write down everything. Just write a few things just to stir your mind up. And then when I'm really fully awake, then I'll write everything out. It's kind of like I get a little outline of it. Okay. Okay. Saw a red bear. Okay. Saw the night sky, you know, saw this annoying guy that kept on trying to sell me something. You write that down. OK, and then you go back to sleep and then you get up and then you start recalling everything and write it down. Now, sometimes this happens where uh, the Lord wants you to stay up longer and to intercede. And whatever he tells you to do, whatever the Holy Spirit tells you to do, just do it. OK, you've had the dream. And I ask, Lord, what do you want me to do? Want me to stay up right now? Sometimes he'll, make you, he'll tell you to stay up. OK, and you say, are you afraid of losing sleep? This it goes into territory. <laughs> sometimes. You got to stay up and just finish that out. Or maybe he wants you to write it out in detail and begin to intercede later. Because those dreams, as you mentioned, when you go back to them, Scripture tells us to war with prophecy. Sometimes God has uh, has spoken to you in those dreams, and then you have to go ahead and look at those dreams and what he said in those dreams for later on, because you're going to war with that uh, later. And so, yeah, I, I record my dreams um, even the stuff that we consider what we put in a pizza category, I record that too, because sometimes it's not really a pizza dream. It's just a dream you have no context for. And it seems out of order. It seems like this, like this doesn't make any sense. And so I record it anyway. If it's not of the Lord, then don't worry about it. It'll go away. But if it is like the weird one that I had, I don't know if we have time for this one. It's a really weird one that I had when I was I think I even put I put this in the book. I had a dream that I was sitting in a church. I was in my 20s and I was sitting in the church and some guy, some guy just walks in the church and throws white powder all over my suit and walks out. And the dream ends. I'm like, this makes no sense. Whatsoever. I got no reference point. This is silly. We, we should just toss that. Right. Just toss it. Well, a co- couple of months go by. I'm sitting in church because I was a youth pastor at that particular church in South Carolina at the time. We have a guest speaker one day. He starts talking about cocaine. He starts talking about how he used to use cocaine and drugs. And also, when he starts talking about that, immediately the dream goes right across my mind. I'm like, oh, what's that all about? He's talking about cocaine. He's giving a warning about leaving him alone. Long story short, one of the ministers at that church who was with us 
right, who started the church, one of the founding pastors, had an issue with drugs and cocaine. He actually got arrested because he was doing, he was involved in several levels of corruption. The powder was on my suit. In the dream, I represented someone who was in ministry and cocaine and powder, white powder was on my suit. God was showing me that it's very close to you, okay? And it's someone that's doing what you do. And those things become teachable moments right here. But I could have just simply said, pizza dream, that's weird. Move on. <laughs> well, and I find too, you know, for those things we write off as pizza dreams, and this would also apply to prophetic words. If yeah. God wants to get us our attention on something, we'll mm -hmm. keep having that same dream. Or as we travel, different ministry folks will be like, hey, I just, this thing, and you'll get the exact same, almost verbatim prophetic word. Um, so if we ignore something that God really wants to get our attention with, don't worry, God's going to keep bringing it back around. And I would say in terms of Amen. keeping track of things, go with whatever makes sense for you. For a lot of us, you know, iPad, iPhone, very practical these days. If you're a journaling person and you'd rather pick up a pen and write in your journal, that's fine. I, I would say whatever way you can record your dreams that you're more than likely to complete the process, just go with that, whatever's natural and comfortable for you, whether it's paper, whether it's the phone, uh, there's no wrong way to do it. So just pick whatever uh, <laughs> is going to work for you. Uh, Charles, in terms of resources for interpreting our dreams, uh, you've got a glossary of some common dream symbols in the back of the book. Um, you know, I know if you start searching for meaning behind things in dreams and visions online, we, you can easily fall into a ditch of stuff that's very witchcraft and new age oriented. So, uh, you know, big picture, somebody has a dream, they write it in their journal, capture it on their phone. How do they prayerfully step into researching that and trying to understand what it means? You know, one of, that's a great question right there. You know, one of the best resources is the Bible itself. The more you read the scriptures right here, you'll start to pick up certain things in scripture. You look at the book of Revelation when you see sapphire and you see that blue. And what did it, what was happening in scripture when you saw that color? You know, many times that color blue would refer to Revelation. It's in the book of Revelation. You see this, you see these kind of colors. You see, you know, various things like, um, I think I, uh, Look at at days and and numbers like the number three. Um, we're referring to the Trinity. You see three so many times in your dream. A lot of time it refers to God in some way. All right, but a, a, a great resource right here. There's been research done by trusted people. Um, I think about the book right here, published by Di the Divinity Code. I go to some sources like that to look at. A lot of research has been done already, okay? I call it following my downhill blocking and writing. If someone that you trust who has done research about the Bible has already done that, then look at that, but make sure that you stay in tune by reading your Bible because you start to see some familiar themes come up in scripture that you'll be able to be able to decipher the meaning on that instead of just going because you're right, there's a lot of weird stuff out there on the internet. And if you go there, you'll find some psychic saying, this is what this means right here. Another thing, sometimes because God speaks to us all differently, you will develop your own symbols in your dream and what it means to you. Let me give you an example. There are times when I've had dreams. I've been in ministry for 27 years. There are times when I've had dreams where I have this recurring dream where I'm trying to preach but I have gum in my mouth, gum. And I'm trying to preach with gum in my mouth. And the more I try to speak, the more gum gets in my mouth. And now I'm chewing so much that I can't even speak. And I'm trying to get rid of this gum and I'm trying to get it out of my mouth. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. And people are sitting there waiting for the word. And I can't even talk because there's too much gum that's in my mouth. Now, for me, I've learned over the years to really press in more when I have those kind of dreams. The enemy is trying to stop the word from going forth. Now, for me, now that might not mean anything to anybody else, but for me, that means I really have to really zone in and pray harder, okay? Other things like uh, you, you talk about animals like snakes. Snakes in scripture, that's in scripture. The first temptation that happened, we see with, with Eve, the serpent appeared to Eve right here, and he did it as a serpent, right? Beguiling, he deceived her. When I dream about snakes, that refers to a spiritual attack that's somewhere around the corner 
that the enemy is at work. I, what do I do? Do I sit there and wait for something to happen? No, I start to pray. I start to engage in warfare right there. And I begin to seek the Lord because even though I may get an attack and it, it may be unavoidable, it will begin to be lessened because I started to pray already. God was alerting me that something was coming. Alligators are very similar. I've dreamed about alligators. Usually in some way, you see they're all in scripture, alligators. They have a big mouth, big bite. That's danger, okay? I've seen that many times. Usually when I've seen alligators, somebody was about to slander me in some way. Alligators also have a long tail. So does the person that's going to slander you. <laughs> and I've seen that too many times. So some of these things, the more you see these common symbols, the more and more that you begin. The Bible talks about us being the temple of the Lord, right? Well, when you dream about a house, you see a dirty room. Usually God's trying to deal, so, deal with you about your own house. And he's trying to tell you to clean it up. And usually it's referring to your temple, your personal temple. It's all in scripture, but God will begin to give you uh, the cyber to meaning. So pray about everything. And in terms of, say, the reader's journey with the book, uh, as we go through the chapters, you share a bunch of different dreams that you've had and, and kind of process those with us. Uh, somebody gets to that last page. How do you hope? How do you feel that God's going to shift their dream life? What, what's going to be different uh, for them uh, on the other side of reading the book? You know, I wrote this so that people notice the book title is Night Vision, Making Sense of Supernatural Dream Encounters. We made it practical. That's why I let people see my stories. I teach through them so that people could see themselves in that. And I think by the end of the book, this is what I believe. My prayer is that people will begin to even get an impartation to dream more, but also begin to understand and kind of demythologize everything to where it's not so spooky. This means that you don't have to go around and, and, and get crazy with it. God is speaking to you. You dream of, of, of being in a shower right here. It's not just because you need to take a bath. God is actually doing some area of cleansing in your life. I try to just make it practical for people so where people are going to be able to see themselves in this book and they're going to get an impartation to dream more, but also they're, they're going to just simply say, that makes sense. Now I get it. The aha moment is going to go on in so many different chapters uh, in this book. And I can say uh, on behalf of Destiny Image, I think that's one of the reasons we and, and myself in particular, I acquired this book. Uh, we were so interested in this is it's just a real practical introduction to dreams and how to process dreams and that God wants to talk to you through your dreams. Uh, it, it's a small book. You can read it really quick and just get right to dreaming with God. So uh, it's it's definitely one of my, my top five favorite books that we've put out this year, just because um, books that speak into the space are, are all over the place. Uh, but a lot of them are are big and weighty, uh, and that's not you know Divinity Code is a massive book because it's got a huge dictionary in it. Not necessarily bad, but not everybody's gonna you know a lot of people are gonna be intimidated by that. So I love that the night vision is is small, and uh, somebody can read that in a day or two and just get right to dreaming with God. Uh, Charles, before we go, I'd love to have you just take a few moments uh, to pray for the audience that dreams would start increasing in their life. Would you do that for us? Hey, Amen. Would love to. Father, I just thank you right now, Lord, for those who are watching and listening, uh, who are going to listen to this uh, podcast. And I just pray right now, Lord, they have a heart. What they're asking, they're not really asking for dreams. They're asking to encounter you. But I pray right now they would encounter you in their dreams and that you would give them revelation. You would give them understanding. And I pray right now, Lord, that that their lives would never be the same as they encounter you in the night seasons. Bless each and every one right now. I pray with them right now, impartation right now in the mighty name of Jesus to be able to see in the spirit realm. We bless them right now and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for that, Charles. And Charles, in terms of people connecting with you, finding out about this, your other books, your ministry, all the things, where do we discover you? On the web. Oh, yeah. They can go to two places. They can go to Charles foxbooks.com, where they can see my other books that I've written. Also, they can go to victorybm.org. That's our ministry, victorybm, B as in boy, M as in Mary, .org. And they can see our website and learn more about us. And they can also order from Amazon and Barnes & Noble and all those other places as well. 
And we'll make it easy like we do with every episode. We'll have links in the description in the show notes, both to Charles' websites as well as places to where you can pick up your very own copy of his new book. It's time to bring this episode of The Sean Tabbitt Show to a close. Many thanks for being a part of my conversation with Charles Fox. Once again, our book today was Night Vision, Making Sense of Supernatural Dream Encounters. And Charles, I want to say thank you so much for sharing with us today. It's been an honor and a pleasure to have you back on the show. Oh, it's been an honor, Sean, man. You're, a, you're an awesome guy, man. <laughs>